The last type of root is in a V-beveled open butt joint. We're going to shove a 6010 rod deep into the gap and run a weld bead on the back side of the metal. Preparation and fit up are more critical, so take your time getting the metal ready. The edge of the bevel needs to be straight and square. Grind off all the mill scale on the bottom side. A half round file works good to clean up the inside of square tubing or pipe. The landing should be uniform. Use a file to knock down any high spots. With a 186010, I use a 1 16th oxyacetylene welding rod as a spacer with around a 16th landing. The size of the gap and landing can vary a little, but when you figure out what you like, try to keep it consistent for every weld you make. Line up the bottom edges of the metal. With a spacer to adjust the gap, run one tack, pushing the rod right down into the gap. Before you finish tacking up, remove the spacer. As tacks cool, they contract and the spacer gets jammed up. So pull the spacer, make sure the gap is uniform, and finish tacking the joint. On heavier pieces, after the first tack, use a small wedge or a screwdriver to keep the gap uniform. Because of the taper, you can remove these after the joint is completely tacked. On square tubing, tack opposite corners. For pipe, opposite sides. Make sure the gap is uniform, straightening when necessary, then put in two more tacks. Flat, horizontal, overhead, and vertical down root passes are all done the same way. Grind the edges of the starts and stops thin. Hold the rod perpendicular to the metal. Scratch start right on the tack. Push a rod down into the puddle and start moving. The filler metal will squirt out the back until you hit the thinned out edge of the tack and it can poke through. Then move as fast as you can keep the gap filling in. If you're not getting all the way through, you will see filler metal squirting out behind the rod, back up in the bevel. Most of the light and sparks will be on the back side and you're building weld on the back of the metal. You want the amperage relatively high, so try starting about the same place as you'd run flat. If you do open a hole, stop right away, pulling the rod back over the bead. Restart right at the edge and keep going. When you finish the weld, grind the edges thin on both sides of the hole and fill it in. Some welding procedures require a vertical up root pass, and generally, you'll need to run about 5 amps lower for uphill. The easiest way is to prepare the metal exactly the same with a uniform narrow gap, shoving the rod in perpendicular and moving up as fast as the gap fills in. Some welders like to thin out the landing a little more and with a step motion, rip a small keyhole, then fill it in, rip a hole and fill it in, always keeping the rod deep in the gap. Other welders like to leave a little thicker landing and wider gap, here again using a step motion laying metal in and making sure it's fusing on the bottom corners. The disadvantage to stepping the root is the possibility of undercutting along the edges on the back side. The advantage is that you actually see the root going in for 100% penetration. Stepping the root uphill also works well when the gap is uneven with wide or narrow spots. The backside bead should be above flush with the entire bottom edges of the bevels melted and fused. Any missed spots are called insufficient penetration. If the travel speed was too slow, the bead stacks up on the backside, causing excessive penetration. On the